Hey, it's Dr. Josh Luke here with the Health Wealth Podcast and Radio Show. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to the Health Wealth Nation. We're here to talk about healthcare affordability and reducing wasteful corporate spending on healthcare, and also how to save your family thousands on healthcare each year. We have guests from all across industry, healthcare industry, disrupting healthcare from HR. And today we have one of the most unique guests that we've ever had. And it's somebody that I came across uh, in 2017. And it's been such an honor to work with her and get to know her and see uh, how they're truly disrupting her organizations, are truly disrupting healthcare. Uh, and uh, I want to introduce you to the CEO and co founder of Wambi, Rebecca Matter. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Josh. Appreciate it. Yeah, and you definitely get the award for having the best backdrop of any guest <laughs> ever with beautiful Woodland Hills here in Southern California uh, in the background. Um, so we come from opposite ends of L.A., not from opposite ends of the world. I'm in, I'm in Orange County, just south of L.A., for those of you who aren't familiar with Southern California. Woodland Hills is on the north side of L.A. So uh, Rebecca and I don't just don't get to hang out as much as we'd like, but we talk weekly and we talk about how to disrupt and improve healthcare. And uh, Wambi and their sister company Care Postcard are organizations that I came across in, in my daily operations as somebody really trying to um, disrupt healthcare delivery and reduce spending for you. And, and what I love about Wambi is, um, let me just give you a brief history of my last few years as a hospital CEO, the Affordable Care Act introduced not just um, initiatives but penalties for hospitals if patient satisfaction wasn't good and that's a difficult proposition and they had us CEOs jumping through hoops for years trying to figure stuff out and the irony is you would just say hey why don't you just give good care and everybody's happy well it's not that easy patients expect a lot uh, when you're caring for you know uh, a full floor of sick patients uh, you know in, in any given instance something unfortunate can happen so keeping those patient satisfaction scores up is difficult but what we learned just about the time that I was leaving the hospital CEO space was that uh, there's a huge connection between employee satisfaction and well-being and patient satisfaction and well-being and Wambi and Rebecca's company was one of the first to market to say, we have anecdotal evidence that will show you, uh, A, that your employee satisfaction is just as important as your uh, patient satisfaction, but since there's an economic impact to every organization for both of those, employee retention and for patient satisfaction, uh, Wambi came up with an awesome formula um, to help keep caretakers, nurses in particular, happy. And I wanted to ask Rebecca just to share that with you. Kind of give us a few minutes on the history of Wambi, how it came about, and how you guys are making a difference both in the hospital, and then we'll talk about how you can use Wambi at home as well. Sure, absolutely. So Wambi was actually created in an acute setting by our inventor, my co-founder, Alex Corin, while she served as the director of patient experience. So what she observed very quickly on into her role um, there was that there was very high turnover among caregivers and there was also pretty poor morale. Um, and so she decided to really uncover what was it that was leading to that poor morale. And, you know, what became evident after having many conversations and really saying, you know, tell me about your, your story. You know, what is it that's kind of causing this among you and your colleagues? They just said, you know, we don't feel seen for the work that we do. Um, you know, it's one moment out of a hundred that my manager might observe me or there might be a proactive comment um, made, whether positive or negative, about me from one of my patients or families. But what about that 99, uh, those 99 other experiences of me providing great care to my patients and um, really wanting an opportunity to be able to illuminate those other moments um, that clearly count um, and to be able to be recognized for that, to have those sort of come to the surface. And so Alex created uh, sort of a baby version of Wambi uh, almost two and a half years ago for that organization and launched it there. Um, and what Wambi is, is it's a care provider recognition and performance system that's driven and powered by real-time patient satisfaction satisfaction. So what that means is that there are other recognition systems out there that provide peer-to-peer -peer feedback or employer um, to employee, so manager to employee, um, top-down management, 
recognition. But there wasn't anything that was actually based in the voice of the patient. And really, we know in healthcare that that's what drives these individuals, these care providers that really come to work every day to care for patients. That's who they care about. That's who they want to help get better. And so creating a system that was fueled by the patient family voice is something that's proven to be really impactful um, in the acute setting, as well as actually in other settings, including home care, which we've recently gone to market with. Um, so it's been quite quite an amazing journey. We, um, we launched uh, two other hospitals and health systems in January of this past year, um, meaning in 2017. We saw some unbelievable results. Uh, we actually just had a case study come out with one of our hospitals and uh, saw some really amazing things on the CAP side, improving CAPs between six and 10 points. So yes, you know, that patient satisfaction survey um, can, can sort of have some nuances to it, but we've seen some really direct impacts there on the patient side to really make folks kind of drive that satisfaction. And on the employee side, really being able to improve engagement among employees by over 30% across the board. Um, so really proud of some of the um, great results that are coming out of Wambi uh, in its installations. So, so awesome stuff. So what I want to do, so a lot of our listeners in the Health Wealth Nation are employers that are trying to figure out how to spend less, particularly wasteful healthcare spending. But we also just have some individuals who are uh, just enthusiastic about saying, gosh, I spend way too much on, on healthcare. Mm -hmm. In fact, every American does, so we can all relate to that. So let's just strip it back to the bare bones. So my mom is in the hospital or I'm in the hospital. Tell me how I can uh, spread the word or, or reward this nurse that's caring for me uh, through, through Wambi. Explain that process to me. It's through an iPad sure. or... Sure, absolutely. So it's delivered in a, in many different ways. It really depends on sort of the context of setting, but typically it can be delivered through an email or text from the organization itself. It can be delivered through a tablet um, or through a patient portal. And you would be able as a patient to be able or family member to provide feedback on an individual provider. And then that individual provider, although that feedback is completely anonymous, that provider is being empowered on a regular basis um, with general aggregate patient satisfaction analytics so basically knowing hey you know I, I do a great job here but here I might want to spend more time and incentivizing them to continue to provide fantastic care and empowering them um, to really uh, continue to drive to be the best provider that they can be so as a patient you would actually provide in, in the moment feedback on an individual provider so so I'm in the hospital and mm -hmm. I have three nurses over five days and um, I decide I want to give them all good feedback and say, hey, they were great. So how do they find out about that feedback and what do they get in return for that? So it depends on the organization, um, but each organization sort of incentivizes um, their, their care providers differently, whether it's a lunch with the chief nursing officer or whether it's a gift card to a local restaurant um, or movie tickets, you know, the, the, the rewards vary on an organization by organization basis. Um, but the way that the providers actually know how they're doing is they have their own gamified dashboard. So we, we leverage gamification and everything that we do with our providers sure. to make sure that they're constantly feeling recognized and they get that ongoing positive feedback um, that they so so deserve uh, and that is mostly based in the voice of the patient so it's really being driven by patient and family feedback so you're so if I'm running a hospital and I have a dashboard on my nurses station that kind of ranks the nurses based on the feedback or at least ranks the top 10 ones because we don't want to embarrass people is that is that something you're seeing well, we don't we don't share sort of the comparison of how okay. folks are doing to one another okay. um, to the to the actual providers. You know, um, this is really about positivity, cheering each other on. We do honor those really amazing moments where someone really went above and beyond in their care and they got an amazing uh, patient comment or um, that that person really went above and beyond for a colleague. So there are a lot of different ways that we sort of raise that recognition to the surface. Um, and then from an organizational perspective, it is a great way to be able to say oh you know all of our across all of our nurses you know we see phenomenal treatment of um, respect for our patients and we know they're they're wonderful at that um, but you know potentially when it comes to explaining the treatment plan maybe we could spend a little bit more time or we could provide more support so it is a great way to learn where there are opportunities for education yeah I've been running hospitals for almost 10 years I, I would think if you if you and I were chatting about implementing this I would actually want a board on the station that only rewarded maybe like the top three to five. So we didn't, we won't know how to pick on people, but made it a little bit competitive to, 
um, to say, hey, we got a great comment and flash the comment on the board and also say this person's ranking highest this week. But it, it seems like, you know, in how, as I've gotten to know, you guys are so flexible on how the different entities and providers want to install it that, um, yeah, you guys are you're pretty flexible with that, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. So and this isn't just specific for nurses, right? It's all caretakers. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, really nursing is at sort of the heart of what we do. They sort of began as the inspiration for the platform. But I will share that um, it, it we see care providers of all sorts be on the platform. So whether that's, you know, therapists or um, or again, of course, nurses or even physicians or maybe even EVS workers or other folks that, you know, um, techs or other people that have had interaction with patients or families, even those people are put on the system as well. Because what that does is it really creates a culture or community within the care care team or the extended care team um, for folks to be able to work together. Gosh, you're getting me fired up. I have no interest in going back to uh, be a hospital CEO, but if I did, I would I would want all my departments to be involved in Wambi, all my patient facing and touching departments so I could actually create some competition amongst them too to be the yes. the highest ranking department, but uh, that's ironic. So, so I'm going to I'm going to give you some of the 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 most uh, in pulling back the curtain on the hospital industry here and telling you a little secret I learned about nurses in my 10 years. You know what they want most more than anything when you give them a gift card or anything else? They want a second paycheck that you don't tell their husbands about. <laughs> they can't tell you how many times they said, hey, if I work extra, can you give me a separate check so I don't have to tell my husband? I always thought that was funny, but I also thought that's, that's against the law to do that uh, with your bonus check. We have to do it in one. But, but what it did make me realize is they like those rewards, uh, the gift cards to places that they can spend, particularly if it's a place their husband or, or spouse or or a significant other doesn't have any interest in, uh, but also even just cafeteria dollars, uh, if there's a Starbucks next door or something. Um, Wambi, correct me if I'm wrong, has the ability to really let the hospital choose what those rewards are, or the provider, because you guys do home-based care as well, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I'll just share with you just that we have seen unbelievable results from organizations that don't use any monetary rewards really? as cool. well. So like whether it's a parking space or, you know, um, again, as I mentioned before, like a lunch with, you know, someone in leadership, uh, that's been a really hot ticket item um, or something like that. Those have been really sort of uh, positive things or maybe trying to get paid time off during a time that is typically hard to get coverage oh, for. Cool. So. There's lots of really cool ways to do it, very creative, and we're, we're completely customizable um, when it comes to, you know, what rewards an organization wants to offer. So, you know, this show is about healthcare affordability, and just so I can connect those dots for the Health Wealth Nation and those listening, um, so there's been a nurse shortage in America for years. When I was running hospitals, there was one of the biggest businesses was uh, companies trying to sell me um, that I could hire nurses from Korea or the Philippines, wherever it was easiest to get a visa at the time, um, to come over. And there was a number of issues with that, particularly English not being the first language. But there was just such a shortage that retention uh, remains. a Regardless of the economy, nurse retention and caretaker retention is such a huge issue. And in the home-based space, that's totally true as well, not even for nurses, but caretakers. So tell us how Wambi is helping with the retention issue for caretakers both in the hospital and in home-based care. Yeah, so I think that's a really um, important topic, Josh, that you brought up. And, you know, it's interesting because what we know is that only 34% of healthcare employees are actually engaged on the job. So when you have a really low engagement rate like that, plus you know that millennials are coming up in this in this world in healthcare as well as sort of you know the global workforce um, at you know at a really fast rate, and we know that millennials are actually 22% more likely to be disengaged than everybody else. We have a serious engagement problem on our hands in healthcare, and that leads to you know all of these issues with with retention and burnout, um, and, and you know it's costing us a fortune. And then we have this other issue, which you just shared about not enough nurses being available, um, and the pools getting smaller from a recruitment perspective. So it, it's a huge challenge, and you know it's interesting because although we started in hospitals and health systems, and clearly these are issues that that are in those um, organizations as well. What 
we found when a home care organization approached us and said, hey, you know, have you done this in home care? I really want to try it for my organization. And we tried it with them. What we learned is that across the board in home care, they're suffering from, from turnover rates that are, are way higher than in the hospital setting. And not only that, you know, it's even harder for them to recruit caregivers or, you know, care providers, depending if you're skilled or non-skilled. So, you know, it's really it's really a pervasive issue and being able to solve that issue is something that I think a lot of folks are paying a lot of attention to now. Um, and the way we approach it is by helping to improve engagement among employees through recognition and really driving folks to feel autonomous and to be able to have sort of power over, you know, their own, their own story. So they can know how am I performing right now? How are my patients feeling about me? You know, what are the things that I need to do in order to provide the best care possible? Possible because that's why folks go into healthcare um, and really being able to kind of draw people back to their purpose, back to their heart um, for the reasons why they went into this business in the first place. But simultaneously, being able to engage and capture those millennials um, that are coming up in um, in our in our organizations every day. So um, that's a bit about how we sort of look at this idea of engagement and trying to drive engagement um, across the board. So you heard Rebecca say that it, it's costing us more money. And when you, when you think about who us is, it's costing the hospital more. Uh, every time they have turnover, uh, it's costing the home-based care, whether it's home health or non-medical home care more every time they have turnover. So WAMBI, what it, what it really does is it, it, it improves retention because let there be no doubt that those costs are passed on to the consumer. And nurses are one thing, it's competitive out there, but caretakers oftentimes making 15 bucks an hour or less, oftentimes didn't go to college, may not be as responsible as somebody who um, is working for a hospital that's, that's gone through the hiring process, fingerprint, all this other stuff. Sometimes these caretakers don't even show up for their third shift. They just decide they don't like the job, don't show up. And now the caretakers really left kind of standing with the bag in their hand. What do I do now? And that drives cost up because there's additional recruitment. So all of these things are related to uh, how much it costs you and I to access health care. So we heard about WAMBI. And Rebecca, I'd like you to share more now with the audience about a Care Postcard and how it differs from Wambi. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that we realized through implementing Wambi at our organizations was that Wambi was creating and sort of um, housing some amazing stories and testimonials from patients or families about individual providers. And our mission at Wambi is to be able to bring compassion to the forefront of human experience. And we look at that in a, a, a very global perspective where it's not just about the patient and the provider, but it's about the patient the provider, the, the manager, the administrator, the organization, as well as the entire community um, that our organization serves. So how do we really drive compassion there? And after realizing we were collecting these really amazing testimonials, we wanted to create a way for those testimonials to go out online and to become public so that other folks in the community could actually look and find those amazing testimonials, which would give a, a wonderful way for those providers to be even better recognized recognized um, out there, you know, in the public eye, as well as for our organizations to get the word out there about the great work that they're doing. Um, so we launched Care Postcard in July, um, and it's a it's a wonderful way to write e-postcards of gratitude to individual providers sharing those stories um, of amazing care experiences that you've had sort of in the past. And I'll share that um, part of this inspiration was also through my experience with my, uh, with the nurses that helped me give birth to my son and really being able to kind of have this way to thank them um, in a very public manner when I previously was able to, you know, to just thank them one on one. And that was something that, you know, we had between the two of us. But I really wanted other people to know about the amazing nurses who helped take care of me um, during that really impactful and uh, and precious time uh, in my life. So it's a wonderful way to do that. And, and everyone can use it. It's on carepostcard.com. It's a, it's a open platform. And it, and it really sort of charges this idea of bringing compassion to the forefront of experiences and, and really elevating kindness and serving it up in a way where other folks can um, can read and can experience and then can learn from those moments. So, so for the Health Wealth Nation who's listening, whether you're a patient in the hospital, whether you're getting care at home, a loved one, a grandmother, an aunt and uncle is getting cared for at home or in a nursing home, 
you can get in front of a computer tonight, right now if you're at home, you can go on to carepostcard.com and you can send a nice note to that individual. Do you need to have their email? How, how do we let them know that something nice was said? Great question. So if you have their email, that's definitely best because then we can actually notify them via email. Hey, a care postcard was written about you. Come and check it out here on the site. Um, and what's great is that now that person can take that care postcard. They can share it on social media. Um, they could link it to their organization's uh, web page. There's a lot of things that you can do with a care postcard. Um, but you don't have to sign up with an account. It's a very open platform and it really allows you to kind of share those positive experiences openly. And then we also have a tool on our system called Care Finder which allows um, individuals like yourselves to be able to search for compassionate providers in your area. That's so great. And so for those of you who are always thinking business, you know, what I, what I understand the difference here is Wambi is actually a business to business platform that's contracted by a provider that, that puts the opportunity in the consumer's hand to reward the nurse through thank yous. And so Care Postcard, kind of the next generation of Wambi, which is called Care Postcard, is what if a hospital or a nursing home or a home health agency hasn't engaged Wambi? Well, guess what? You can still go reward that nurse by just going to carepostcard.com. So guess what? If your next door neighbor is a nurse and you just admire how he or she gets up early every morning and still tends to all their things, you can. St it doesn't have to, you don't have to be a patient. You can go on there and say, hey, this person is, is so great at what they do. I just wanted to reward them with a nice message. And so I really think... Um, both Wambi and Care Postcard are going to revolutionize um, just caretaker satisfaction and employee satisfaction. And so uh, I'm really grateful, Rebecca, that you guys have done this. So tell us a little bit about what's next and where you see. You started in hospitals, then you mm -hmm. started getting some interest from at least one or two nursing homes I know and now home health. So tell us how you see uh, the company continuing to grow. Sure, absolutely. So I definitely see, you know, hospitals and health systems being a major focus of ours um, as we sort of continue on uh, in in the market. I will share that home care is uh, is now a huge focus of ours. We see um, a lot of impact there, and you know, it's especially difficult for them with a decentralized workforce and being able to create sort of a community culture. Um, and that's something that we do really well. So it's a really nice fit for us in home care, and so that is a major um, focus for us in 2018. And um, going. Forward forward, definitely continuing to kind of bring our message and bring on new ways and creative ways to drive compassion um, in some of the these sort of new ways we have like care postcard and being able to elevate that messaging. Um, I will share that we see Wambi really being used um, in, in different ways depending upon the organizations, but a lot of folks have come to us and are starting to share, hey, you know, we actually want a way now for our employees to provide feedback on, prov on their managers or on people that they work with in HR and things like that. So this this platform is becoming sort of multifaceted, uh, which is something that we're really excited about. And uh, just providing folks with a voice, whether it's a patient or family member, or it's a care provider, um, is something that, that we feel strongly about. And we know that that's going to only drive better experiences for everyone. Yeah. And I really, truly think the sky's the limit for Wambi and Care Postcard. It's such a disruptor. It's such a unique uh, reward system for employee satisfaction and retention and uh, so you know I one, one thing I haven't done on the on the health wealth podcast and radio show before is talk about the National Readmission Prevention Collaborative because that is a, a not-for-profit that my wife and I founded years ago and we go out and we look for uh, industry disruptors that are helping transform from what we call a heads and beds mentality in the hospital to a value-based care model where we're putting the focus on the patient and Wambi is one of those three or four organizations that in the five or six years I've been doing that, that I actually reached out to them and said, hey, would love for you to kind of join our road show. And for those of you, I'm going to ramble off some cities here because Wambi and Care Postcard, whether it's Rebecca or one of her colleagues, uh, Alex or Tori, will be at pretty much all of these events. So I'm going to ramble off some cities and you can go to the following website, nationalreadmissionprevention.com. And you'll see 12 events in 2018. I know those are three long words, but they're three words you know. So it's nationalreadmissionprevention.com. You're going to see events between April and um, October of this year in, uh, let's see, Boston, Los Angeles, Dallas, Houston, Charlotte, Atlanta, St. Louis, Chicago, New York, and uh, I'm missing San Francisco, and I think I missed two there, but... 
Did you um, say L.A.? Baltimore. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, gosh, I didn't say LA, but I think I'm missing one. So, so I think I covered most of them there. Um, but if you're in any of those markets and you want to come here more or learn more about care coordination, readmission prevention, uh, employee satisfaction, nurse retention, how WAMBI and Care Postcard have actually absolutely revolutionized gamification of uh, caretaker uh, satisfaction, come check it out. Uh, Rebecca, tell us uh, where they can, you're on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. As is uh, your colleague Alex Corin, C O R E N, her her co-founder and the inventor she mentioned. And on, are you on Twitter as well? Uh, my my team is yes. I think we're on Twitter as well. Okay, so uh, yeah, I know uh, the Wambi team is on Twitter, so you can find them there. And if not, just shoot me an email, and I'll connect yeah. you with their Twitter handles. Uh, what are your your the websites for Wambi and Care Postcard? So you can check out Wambi at wambi.org, and Care Postcard is just carepostcard.com. So care, C-A-R-E, and then postcard.com. Awesome stuff. So I always end the show with this very important question. What is your favorite sports team to root for, whether college or pro? Eagles. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're all in the bandwagon now. Are you from Philly? I am originally from Philly. Oh, cool. Awesome. Well, yep. I'm on the bandwagon. She's been on the bandwagon for quite a while. So. There I'm on the go. bandwagon. It's a good time to be a Philly fan. So, <laughs> so join me in thanking Rebecca Meadows, CEO of Wambi and co-founder for you. joining the show. If you have any more questions, you can hit me up on LinkedIn or you can shoot her a note at wambi.org. That's W-A-M as in Mary, B as in boy, I dot org. So thanks so much, Rebecca, for joining the show today. Thank you, Josh. Really appreciate it. All right.